and welcome to our first video here on Teacher Tech. And today we're going to be going over how to make a fillable Google Doc. Now, uh, I know some of you probably have had experience using Google Docs before, but just in case you do not know where to go, we are in Google Drive currently. We're going to hit New Docs, and that will generate the Google Doc for you. For those of you who know how to, this works, just stick with me for here for a minute. Just want to make sure I get it done for everyone. So up here is where you can title your document. So for this, I'm going to title how to make a fillable Google Doc. Now that's saved in, it's going to be saved that way in our drive, and we are going to just start chugging along. Now. Um, most of you probably already have something similar to a worksheet, something that might look like this. For the example today, I'm going to be using a genetics using Punnett Square's guided notes. Now, typically, I would just print this out and give this to students to follow along with their PowerPoints, and they would obviously, you know, fill in the blanks as they go along. But since now I can't print the paper or I don't want to ask my students to print the paper, I needed to come up with a way to have them fill this in besides just sitting here and typing their words because it causes everything to shift. Now, if you're okay with it causing the shifts, that's fine. But as you start to add more images and things like that into your PowerPoint notes, as far as maybe there's a picture or a diagram or you want to add a chart or a graph or something that they want to look at, you're going to start to create a lot of spacing issues and then the kids will get very confused. So what I want to do is just take a minute and show you this little technique that I've been using so far this year that's been very helpful, and it's called text boxing. So they don't really have text box to use that great in Google for what we're shooting for, so what I end up using is tables. So when I insert a table, let's say I have one like for a question and I have one blank that I want the student to fill in, I'm going to choose a two-row one row, two column table. Now with this, it allows me to create this little median of being able to move and slide. So if I wanted to come up with a question of what is two plus two equals, I can then shift this all the way down over here and I've now generated an answer box over here. Now let's say I don't want this box to be that big because I am very OCD, I like things to be quite well fitting. You can move it to shrink it to make it this size. Nice part about this is too, you can change the font size, make things bigger, you can make it bold, all these little extra flair items. Now I've had students in the past make a comment that they didn't like the fact that this was a box over here. Um, if you click within the cell here, which is what this is because it is a table cell, there's this little downward arrow right here that you can click on. It says click on to select borders. You can click all borders and then change the border color up here to white. And now this box is now mystically disappeared into the paper. But now you'll notice that this line's missing. So you can do one of two things. You can click just on an individual line and turn that line black. Or we can hit the downward arrow again and do the full box outline for black. By no means necessary do you have to do this. This is a little bit of an extra step, and you know, uh, this is something I do because my A, my students asked for it, and B, I think it makes the paper look a little bit cleaner, and the boxes start to stick out to the students to where they need to fill in. So that's all fine and dandy, but let's say maybe you have sentences a blank, but then need more sentences. How would that work? Well, it's the same thing. You would just insert a table, but now you're going to add three columns. So maybe you want to say, uh, Susie went on a run. Apparently, even fictional people need to have correct spelling of their name. So if Susie went on a run, I like to bold my segments of which my students are reading and I like to put it on size 14 font. So I just adjust the bar. Maybe this is where we're putting the blank for what, I don't know, this is just an example. So maybe this was for fun. I personally would never go for, on a run for fun, but I have plenty of friends that are runners. So 
there we go. So, for fun, because she liked it. Spelling mistake there. We all make mistakes, but there you go. Change this to size 14. Bold it. Now you can move it. So if you wanted them to fill in this blank, you would just delete it, and now the student has that ability to fill in that blank. The other thing I like to recommend on these boxes is where you're doing your typing is to actually center them because it kind of gives it that better feeling of balance. Once again, probably my OCD kicking in, but if you are like me, that might help you out. I don't know. So let's move on to this example. Let's say you're not generating a brand new worksheet and you want to use something from a past worksheet. Well, what would this look like? Well, this would look very similar to your actual worksheet that you have, for example, the one here. But our goal is to get it to look like something like this. So I'm going to take you through a quick little step-by-step -step process here of how I do this. So, as you can see here, since this is now going to be a digital version, I'm first going to make a copy because I don't want to change my physical version for when I use it next year in class. So I'm going to change this to say, copy of genetics, Punnett square. But I'm going to change it to say digital at the end of my doc, which is going to generate a brand new digital version of this in your Google Drive. Now the nice part about this is it keeps your old copy, so even if you make a mistake here that is so awfully horribly bad, you're able to just delete and start over and you still have your fresh page. So that's the really nice part. So I'm going to get rid of this tab because we have our new copy. So this is now the copy of it. As you can see, the words digital are added in at the uh, back end here of the copy. So we're just going to look at this here. So I have one full like sentence it needs here with two blanks. So if we count that, that would be one, two, three. With that said, you would hit insert table. And I'm going to break it down into chunks of three. Simple and easy here. You just copy and paste. And you stretch this out okay, so that your sentences all work equally. I can bold it to make it look a little bit more standout-ish or better. Or you can leave it unbolded depending on how your spacing needs to work. Um, for my final example, like as you can see on my finalized one here, I left it not bolded. So if you look here, you can go like that. Cool. Now, it's also nice to have your answer key made. Now, what I did with these is I made new digital answer keys to be able to help whether you have a teacher aid in your classroom, um, you know, you have a student that you know, wants to get done and check their work, you can have these answer keys ready and available even for yourself in the future so it's not as much of a hassle to sit there and rewrite out your answer keys in case you don't keep them year after year. Um, so to continue on here, let's say that maybe this is a lot of space. As you can see, I gave it pretty much the same amount of space as it is down here for two words. So you can actually then highlight these two and merge the cells. What this does is it generates only one cell now, but they can put both their answers in there. The other thing that's very good about this is you can see when you click here, it's got that flashing arrow on the left or the flashing icon on the left to type. If I change this to center, my students' answers when they officially click on this will now always snap to center. A couple of other things I like to do for this is change the font color. I like to change it to a, a color that really sticks out to me. So I choose like a vibrant blue. That way when they type in their answer, once again, that's not a correct answer. That's just in there for fun. But now I can see where they're filling things in and can check it more quickly. So once this line is done, you can delete it. And now you're off to the races with the next one. Now you have a couple of options here. You could sit and work through each of the sentences here. So these two are originally connected. So what I might do is then hit the two finger button or right click, depending on if you're using a mouse or a keypad. Um, and you can actually add or insert rows. So you could insert a row below. Now I don't like to do this because it gets kind of pretty tight. 
So what you can do is then delete the row and just insert a new row. Now here, I've accidentally inserted not enough. As you can see, I have one, two, three, four, but maybe we can make it work. So let's see if I copy this, fits in there. And now I have all this space for students to write, or if I don't want to give them as much space, I can move it this way. You can then delete this space. Now you might say, now Brian, that's a lot of space in between there. So if you want to click in between, you can change the font size between those gaps to eight. You can even get as drastic as changing it to the size font of one. And it really starts to close those gaps to make it look like it's a generic piece of paper. Now, what I like to do is I like to really close all my gaps as we get going. Now, a couple of other things. Depending on where you are and having the students enter their names and things like that, you no longer will need the name and things up here. So you can just delete that and now you have this nice little segment. So a couple of other things that I've already talked about with you, just a quick refresher. So we have our boxes in here. Students have asked that it's getting too boxy. They don't like that, how it looks. Remember, you can click that upward arrow here to get to your box framing to then change that to white. Like I said, this is an extra step that you can do that is not required. Students prefer it, but, or at least my students prefer it, but it does not mean that you have to do it. I just do it because that was feedback that was given to me, and I always ask for feedback because I'm always trying to improve things that I am making. So as you can see there, I've now generated my worksheet with my fillable things. As you continue to go along, you just continue to copy and paste and insert in above until you end up with something that looks like this. So as you go through, and if we click these, you'll see that all of my answers here are already in that nice little blue flash with that blue font. So all my students' work will be penciled in in blue. So just for today, that was all I wanted to cover. When you get to a point then when you have generated one of these worksheets, you can actually create an answer key, which is very simple by just saying file, make a copy. Now for this one, you could say, you know, digital notes answer key, and you'll get something that is blanked and you can literally fill it in yourself. So now you have all of your answers to be filled in for you. So that is all I wanted to go over today, just some basic fill-in-the-blank guided notes, things like that. Um, we'll put in a little bit more of an advanced section in for this a little bit later, but I just wanted to get the ball rolling with some just simple fill-in-the-blank for PowerPoints, as I know a lot of teachers have a lot of good PowerPoints and good notes, but might not have a good way to push it out to students. Uh, the one last thing I'd like to add on this is that if you're actually sharing this with a student and you can force them to make a copy, um, which I'll be talking about in another video of how to do a forced copy. But when they make their copy and want to share it with you, you can just have them type their last name in the front of it right there, and it generates it for you. So I will see you in the next video. This is Brian, and I hope this teacher tech little hack here was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.